Today I'll be showing you some upgrades to my Skywatcher Skymax 127. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I've had my Skymax 127 for a few years now, but it rarely gets an outing under the stars as my main focus has been on deep sky astrophotography. I'm planning to remedy this situation in 2024 though, and I decided to dust off this portable and highly capable wee scope for visual work and some lunar and planetary imaging. I need to replace some of the stock accessories before I can get the scope working the way I want to, so in this video I'll share my thoughts on what I think are some essential and optional upgrades and how I went about it. Hopefully this will be helpful for folks who already have this scope or are planning something similar. Before that though, I'll go over some of the key specs of the Skymax 127 and I'll share why I think this is a fantastic grab and go scope to add to your astro arsenal. I'll be doing a more detailed review of the scope in a later video, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification below to keep up to date with my latest videos. The Skymax 127 is a Maxitoff Cassegrain telescope with a focal length of 1500mm and a focal ratio of f12. This makes it slower than many scopes, in terms of focal ratio at least, so it's not ideal for any long exposure deep sky work. I'll be using this mainly for visual work on the moon and planets and some brighter clusters, so f12 isn't a big deal for me. I'll also be doing some occasional lunar and planetary imaging, but this involves fast integrations at high frame rates on bright targets, so again the slow focal ratio isn't a problem here. The main appeal for me though is its size. It weighs just 3 kilograms and it's only 320 millimeters long, meaning you don't need a heavy duty mount to get the most out of it. It looks like it should be a lot lighter than 3 kilos, but as soon as you pick it up you can see what accounts for the weight. It's built like a wee tank and it has the look and feel of a quality build. The rear back plate and the rings that hold the heavy multi-coated corrector are cast metal, so these elements make up the bulk of the Skymax 127's weight. It's no hassle or chore to pick up though, so it makes an ideal grab and go scope that packs in a nice amount of focal length. Despite the quality of the scope itself, some of the accessories that come with it, like many mass-produced scopes today, aren't the greatest. There's thankfully a ton of very cost-effective options for upgrading, and I'll share some of these with you all now. I'll have links to all the gear I mentioned in the description below, so you can go check that out if you're planning a similar upgrade. The first weak link in my opinion is the scope's visual back, located, not surprisingly, at the back of the Skymax. It's a very basic one, with a one and a quarter inch size, with two screws that connect directly to a diagonal, or any other accessories you may want to attach to the scope. I really don't like these things as they have a nasty habit of digging in and marring in your accessories as they connect. I also get really nervous relying on two small screws being responsible for holding my precious gear in place as the scope slews across the night sky. I've combated this by investing in a relatively inexpensive 2 inch visual back from Celestron which screws directly onto the scope at one end and has a secure compression ring at the other end. Before adding this though I had to make another small adjustment to the original visual back on the scope. My version of the Skymax 127 has an older connector that's much smaller than 2 inches, so I had to get an additional adapter that screws directly onto the original threads. I've heard that some of the newer production models of the scope have a more standard SCT thread, but mine doesn't, so I needed to source another adapter. Thankfully, the wonderful folks over at First Light Optics here in the UK have a solution, and they sell a handy Mac to SCT adapter ring. You simply need to thread off the original ring and replace it with the adapter, and then that frees you up for attaching more standard accessories with an SCT thread, like a Celestron 2 inch adapter. From here I'm free to connect any 2 inch eyepiece or accessory, or I can slide in a reducer adapter to use my smaller 1 and a quarter inch accessories. This simple upgrade opens up a wide range of options, as well as securely fitting my gear to the scope, so it's win-win. With the adapter ring fitted you also have the option of adding this handy T adapter, which means I can add a DSLR with a T ring, all with a secure threaded fitting. Just screw it on and off you go. The next upgrade is related to navigating around the night sky by replacing the stock finder scope that comes with the Skymax 127. While it performs okay, I was looking for something a little bit more robust and efficient, so that I can maximise my time under a rare clear nights here in Scotland. This method's totally overkill, but it does relate to the mount that I'll be using with the Skymax 127, which I'll show you later in the video. I've added the highly dependable StarSense auto-align unit to the scope, and this will allow me to quickly align the telescope and get it zeroed in on the targets that I want to see or image. I'm not going to go over the ins and outs of setting up the StarSense, but I'll link to a fantastic set of tutorials by Cody over in his Astro Blender channel in the description below, so you can go check that out after this video. You could just as easily get by with a stock finder, or even upgrade to a better quality one, or even a Telrad finder, but for my purposes the star sense makes, well, sense. In terms of amount, I'll be using a spare Celestron Nexstar SE alt as go to system that came with the C6 Schmidt Cassegrain that I picked up last year. I've since adapted the C6 to Hyperstar system for use in an equatorial mount for astrophotography, so the Nexstar mount was just sitting in a box looking for a job. I'll link to a video detailing my Hyperstar conversion of the C6 up here and in the description below, so you can go check that out later if you're interested. As I'm mainly planning to do visual work with some occasional imaging of the moon and planets, an alt as mount will be more than enough for me. The scope's well within the limits of the mount's capabilities, and my exposures for lunar and planetary will be really short, so the mount should be okay. I could also use one of my larger equatorial mounts, but as my aim's grab and go, the wee next star is more than ideal. 
As well as the StarSense, the mount also supports Wi-Fi connections with a handy Sky Portal unit which plugs straight into the auxiliary port in the mount. The StarSense also needs a free auxiliary port, so I needed to get a splitter cable which allows me to use them both together. Again, this is a nice to have rather than an essential, and you can easily get by with the traditional finder in the mount's handpad. My aim's speed and efficiency though, so it makes more sense for my situation. Finally, I've also opted to use my own collection of eyepieces rather than the basic 10 and 25mm stock eyepieces that come with the scope. While they're okay to start off with, I quickly realised the benefits of using higher quality eyepieces to enhance my views of the night sky. Here I have a simple 25mm eyepiece and an 8-24mm zoom eyepiece, both from Celestron. For close-up views when the conditions allow, I have a Skywatcher ultra-wide angle 4mm planetary eyepiece and an Explore Scientific 10mm long eye relief eyepiece. These should cover me for a good range of scenarios, but let me know in the comments below what eyepieces you all use or recommend. As most of my eyepieces are one and a quarter inch size, I'll be using this excellent Celestron dielectric diagonal with its corresponding threads. It's a step up from the stock one that comes with the scope, so it'll be great to get some enhanced views of our night sky with a simple upgrade. So that's it, my upgraded SkyMax is ready for action and rearing to go. I just need some clear skies now. I'll be sharing more videos on my experience with it over the coming months, as well as some live streams if the conditions allow, so I hope you can join me for that. Thanks for tuning in, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.